Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Maybe this is your first time tuning in and joining us where we welcome you and trust that you're blessed with what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer. Um, our nation and our world is in tremendous need of a genuine um, move of God. And we need to pray to that end. We also need to pray for our local community and region here. Um, things are happening. We need to continue to pray. We also need to pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church um, members in particular. We need to pray that God would continue to open up the windows of heaven and pour out his favor upon his people here. And lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world, wherever they may be, there's great reports of revival around the world, just amazing things. We pray that God provides all of his people with a hedge of protection. This is a perfect time uh, for you to um, pray with us. Maybe you have a special and spoken request. It's a perfect time. Let's pray together. Father, we love you, praise you, and we worship you. <coughs> we believe in you for a great, mighty move of the Holy Ghost in this hour. Father, we pray for the direction, the condition of our world and our nation. We pray that you will continue to open up doors here locally, doors of utterance and influence. We also remember Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and pray that you'll continue to open up the windows of heaven, pour out your favor. Lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world that you provide each and every one of them with a hedge of protection. We ask all this in the name above every name, the name of Jesus. Everybody said, Amen. Well, I really feel this on my heart this morning for somebody or somebody's. So let us go to 2 Kings chapter number 6. And we're just going to jump into this story. I'm going to give a little background here just to uh, to fill in some blanks. But 2 Kings chapter 5, I'm sorry, chapter 6 and verse 5. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. Important stuff here. And the man of God said, where fell it? Where did, where did you lose it? What happened? And he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore said he, and I'm assuming that he that's, being referred to here is the prophet, take it up to thee, and he put out his hand, the man that had lost the ax head, and he took it. Recovering your cutting edge. Recovering your cutting edge. Here in 2 Kings 5 and 2 Kings 6, there is a collection of stories that involves the prophet, supernatural vignettes, short stories that are applicable for times and seasons. And I believe that this story that's found here in 2 Kings chapter 6. They come together, the sons of the prophets, and say that the place where we're living is too small for us. We need to go into a building program. We need to 
um, enlarge the place where we dwell. We need we need a bigger church. We need, or in an individual basis, I want to expand my territory. I want I want more room. I I'm want more room. I want to expand. I want to grow. And so they're off to the woods to cut down trees. And one goes with them. He has a borrowed axe. And while felling a beam, while chopping down a tree, swinging with all his might, he was putting all of his energy into it. But it was the axe head that was actually effectively getting the job done. Important point here. He was exerting all of his energy, but it was the axe head, a borrowed axe head, that was getting the job done, getting the work accomplished. And while this was taking place, the axe head fell off of the end of the axe handle and fell into the water. Upon recognizing that something is missing, everybody's intentions are good. We want to grow. We want to build. We're in a building program. We want to, we want to expand but he recognized that something is missing. The ax head's gone. He goes to the man of God, very wise. He goes to the man of God and says, alas, master, it was borrowed. It was not mine. It was a gift. It was a supernatural enablement. Maybe it was a something given to me from God, something that was given to me by the Holy Ghost, by something I derived from the Word of God, something that was given to me through the laying on of the hands of the ministry. But something is gone. Something is missing. Where did you lose it? Now, this is, this is critically important. You know, recovery is a big deal. And I'm... I'm going to walk on water here a little bit and make a statement. I think that recovery is a bigger deal than we let on. And I think that there are a lot of people that are attempting to just get back to a place that they had in God or just be restored to something that they feel like they've lost or misplaced or maybe the devil has it. <clears throat> I think this is a bigger deal than we realize. If my, my feelings are correct, there's even some people that are watching this this morning that are in your, 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 you're in that process of a pursuing after something like David did, where he needed to recover all that was lost and recover that was taken that by the, the Amalekites. The Bible is replete with examples of this, of being restored and recovering that which is yours so you can get the job done. And so the man goes to the man of God and he says, where did you lose it? He showed him the spot and the man of God took a branch and put it in the water, and the Bible says that the iron did swim. This is where the supernatural is now engaged. It's it's almost like God is going to do his part to restore us and to help us to recover that which has been lost to get the job done. But it's like there's some things that have to be done in advance. You have to recognize that something is lost. You have to connect 
with your leadership, your man of God, your prophet in your life. And then God does the miracle. And the end of the story is the iron did swim. It floated. Iron does not float, ladies and gentlemen. The seafloor is littered with testimonies that steel and iron do not float. But it will come back. It will come back to the surface so that we can get a hold of it if we will go through the proper channels. This is a big deal. I like, I like the statement that a man made one time. He said, the only real mistake is a circumstance in, w- in which nothing was learned. I made this statement. Um, I really f- feel like it was the prompting of the Holy Ghost to address at the end of this magnificent preaching by Brother Jared Marks last night here. Um, talking about regret. Regret is a human thing. It's not just an exclusive group. It's a human thing. It comes with people get a little older, people get a little wiser, people get a little bit more experience. And with that accumulation, with that, with that development, with that aging, with that, with life, it's just life. We all go through a certain level of examining our regrets. Don't let your wheels get stuck in regret. It's a waste of time. Extract what you can from your lessons of life, be they good or bad, and just keep on trekking. God is interested in restoring us and helping us recover our cutting edge. We have a job to do. We have a purpose here. God has a individual, a unique individual plan for all of us, but we have to have our cutting edge in order to be effective. It's not just getting up and giving a Bible study. It's not just giving up and saying, well, you know, I told somebody about Jesus. It's having your cutting edge. It's having that anointing. It's having that sense of direction, that sense of purpose, that confidence that only comes with having that that proper pitch, that proper relationship with God. Recovering your cutting edge. Let's get after it. Let's get our cutting edge back and let's finish what we started. God bless you. Thank you for joining us here this morning. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.